Hey folks, Dr. Groovy here, Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com. I uh, had a friend write me yesterday and getting ready to play a casino for the um, first time and just asking general questions about, you know, what to charge and what to expect and all that stuff. So I figured, hey, might as well let y'all in on my experiences. I did casino work, uh, playing in bands for off and on. Um, 20 years, and, you know, just, um, they were just a huge part of what you had to play. And now this is for playing in the lounge. Uh, the showrooms at the casinos are, of course, you know, for, if you're playing with, you know, the artist gigs and so forth, say you're playing with Garth Brooks or whatever, then you don't need this video. Um, the lounges are lounges, and you were there just because you're there. <laughs> Nobody could really care if you're there or not for the most part. Um, this is all over the place, so I'll give you different real world um, expectations and what you will run into, so to be prepared for all of it. Um, number one, uh, you're probably going to have to have an agent to get in there, period. Like here where I live in Mesquite, Nevada, there's, you know, now that they've torn a couple down, there's only three large casinos and then some smaller ones. But um, they just use a booking agency and only their bands, and that's it. If uh, you happen to be able to get in um, to play the place, the casino still owes the booking agency 10 to 15 percent um, and they will take it out of your pay so know that that's coming and you will be taxed on it you will receive a 1099 thing or um, so be prepared to fill out the tax work and to give up 10 to 15 percent of your money to the agency because the agency gets paid by uh, the whole contract like for a year at a time so but the um, casino will withhold that money from your um, payments. Um, of course, if you live in the town where you're playing it, um, you can negotiate the price, whatever that may be, and I'll go in to a little bit of depth with this. If you live in town and you do not have to have free, you know, rooms comped for you and meals comped for you, um, then you can get a little more out of them uh, because they don't have all that expense. Okay, to find out what they actually pay, these days it's a lot easier because um, generally the agency is not going to tell you even though you're giving them money. So um, you can use their website of the casino, find out what bands have played there, who's coming up, whatever. They will have a website. Just simply contact them, tell them your situation, and see what they normally get. Again, if they are traveling groups that have to go there and sit for a week, and by a week, I'm going to base all this basically on four to five nights a week. A lot of casinos and so forth have just gone down to weekends, but I'm going to base all of this on like four to five nights. Um, averages have not changed in the past 30 years, um, 1800 to three grand for the band, period. So you divide it up how you want to and take in as many pieces as you want to, which I will bring up in a second. You might be forced to hire a member for a week or two, however long you're there. So 1800 to three grand is basically what you're looking at, and that depends on the casino, and again, depends on if you're local and they get to save that money or not, and again, you're giving up 10 to 15% of that. Uh, some what I was getting ready to tell you, like the Gold Coast here in Las Vegas and a lot of other casinos, um, I'd say one out of ten casinos, just so you have an idea, uh, require that you have a female in the band, singer, along with whatever you have. If you don't, then this is a very, very common occurrence. Um, you better know your Nashville number systems and... Um, you can get on Craigslist and hire one for the week, or the duration again, or simply 
uh, get a hold of the agency and um, that's the least they can do is refer you to um, somebody that they normally book in there for situations like that. So the girls that uh, do this or the ladies that do these things are used to subbing and filling in for bands who do not have females in the band. So um, that does come up and you do get through it. You, uh, you get to play in E flat and B flat all night long. But the pros out there will bring charts, Nashville number system charts, not any other kind of chart. That's what they will bring to you. It will um, be, you know, the ones and the forwards and the fives and the two minors and, you know, um, split bars and um, where things stop and whole notes, everything for you. And they will dictate the key because there's normally not a key written unless it's her personal stash of stuff. But a lot of them will just bring it in. They'll say, okay, yeah, I do this in B flat. And so you have to know your ones, fours, fives, your two minors, and so forth. So be prepared for that. Okay, so that basically covers that. Um, you can't go in looking like Nirvana. <laughs> like you're just, you know, people have to know that you are doing something strictly by your appearance when you're on break or walking into the place. Um, and, um, of course, that carries right onto the stage. So dress appropriately. Dress nice. And um, they're generally not going to do like they did in the old days, have you dress identically, unless you are a doo-wop group. You know, like the Coasters and the uh, so forth. Um, who's the band that lives here in town? The uh, Drifters. Um, of course, they all still dress alike and have their... Motown dance moves and everything down, which is amazing. Um, be prepared to entertain. Don't expect to just be able to play and get away with it. You have to entertain. They expect a singer to be out in the audience doing something, you know, getting people up to dance. Not just by saying, get up and dance, but yeah, you got to do the cheese. So, um, a lot of this is just going to seem like, oh my god, oh no. But if you're going to do casinos, kids, you got to you got to accept the cheese and spread the cheese. Um, a few casinos I've played that uh, um, were strictly country casinos. Uh, one of them here in town is. Um, if they say country, they mean it. Um, playing over there and somebody wanted to hear anything other than country. So it's like, okay, just an old standard should get us through. So it's like Blue Suede Shoes was the song we chose. Did it, uh, entertainment manager came in and said one more song like that and you guys are out of here, you know, on <laughs> right then and there. So um, stick to what you're hired for, you know, and uh, that only. Um, check out the actual uh, contract writer. You don't get to give them one demanding what you want. You're sent one. Get one from the agency and find out exactly what they expect from you. Um, most casinos will do, uh, or have you do, three one-hour sets with half-hour breaks is the average. Uh, there's one here in town and lots all over the U.S. Uh, that have you do six 45-minute sets with 15-minute breaks. Yep, six. And that's what I'm used to playing. Um, every place back home in Indiana... Um, every place was nine to three, six sets, 15 minute breaks, no matter where you played. That was just the standard. Still is. Okay. Uh, as far as gear goes, okay, drummers, right away they're going to put you behind plexiglass. Some goes all the way to the ceiling and we'll have a plexiglass door for you to enter into and a house kit in there that you must use. Okay, because you can't get your drums through that little door you have to go through. Um, but if you're going to use your own drums, then they will bring out the plexiglass shield and you're going behind it. You will not be heard out front. <laughs> um, they may put mics on you. Probably not. Um, they just stick you behind there and make it sound horrid. Uh, a lot of casinos don't have proper sound engineers and they will have a different um, porter otherwise known as a janitor, 
come over there and just kind of look at the mixing board and try to do whatever he can. Yes, that happens. Um, a lot of casinos do not allow amplifiers on the stage. So have everything ready for such things, whether you're bringing in like this Johnson thing or a, iP or an, or a pod, or um, these days I see a lot of laptops on stage, you know, and you run your typical um, home recording <laughs> software on there and just change patches via that. So have it all ready. Um, most casinos do provide a PA of sorts that you must use. You can't use your own, usually. Nine out of ten, I'm going to say, have a system that they want you to use. They change all the time. Sometimes you get one channel, so you must use um, your setup, your mixer and what have you, and your EQs and so forth. They will have house EQs, but they won't let you change them because um, the big screen TV and everything else, all the rest of the sound is in different channels in their mixer that is off stage in another room sometimes. And they might just send a guy down and turn that on for you right before you play and then they'll come by and shut it off at night. But they will expect you to submix everything into your mixer and just send them one line or two. Um, generally two because they do run stereo. They always run stereo for the games and everything. They want that stereo sound. So be prepared to send them two lines or just um, two mono lines. Either way, you're going to have to get two channels, generally. If they do have an engineer with an actual console, um, don't expect them to help you much, and you're not going to get what you want in your monitors, if anything. Um, if you go in there with a set of electronic drums, um, bring in some in-ear monitors. If the whole band can do in-ear monitors, the, better, the more of you that can do that, uh, the better. They don't like you to have monitors on stage either, and some don't provide them, so um, you may be, have the mains there, which will be a cabinet with, usually it's a set of monitors with a 12 and a tweeter, some old PVs from 1978 hanging up there and no subs anywhere, and that's what you get. Uh, Sam's Town in Vegas, they have the speakers that uh, are the actual public address speakers, a PA, not a sound system, but the speakers that are built in the ceiling, you know, it's like, um, uh, Texas Hold'em, everybody come on over, everybody welcome, and it will shut what you're doing way down to about a third and let the announcements come through, but that's what you're playing through, is the ceiling speakers. And there's a six channel Yamaha board over there, and three different bands, and they get one band to play two nights from the, you know, nine to two in the morning set, and then another band plays from two in the morning until like eight, and then another band plays from eight in the morning until whatever. These things happen. So everybody gets, you know, two channels, you know, stereo. Um, and you all have to put your gear up there, which is usually, again, um, the mo uh, shared drum kit is a must for those situations and again uh, probably no amps there is sometimes a break room and if you have a break room then that's usually if you're allowed to where you put your amplifiers and mic them from in there and it, again these are all different situations that you're going to run into and be prepared for each and every single one of these okay again drummers the only way you're going to be heard out front is an electronic kit Okay, um, because it has to be put through, otherwise there's nothing out there. Um, so it's up to you. Do you want to be heard or do you just want your kit 100% uh, engulfed in plexiglass and that's just the way it's going to sound out front? Okay, because they always put the pit, you know, the table games, blackjack and roulette and everything, real close to the band, yet all them people have to hear. It's just a, the band is a last minute thing that nobody cares about. They really don't. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Um, again, just look sharp, have your stuff together, read charts, um, check out the load-in situation. That's always going to be odd. Um, 
to say the least, because they don't want you going throughout the casino with your stuff, which is a huge thing on the really large casinos. It could take you five hours to load in because you have to go through the um, service elevators and then through, sometimes through, the um, different floors and um, back through, like through the kitchen <laughs> and everywhere. And big things aren't going to fit. You know, we used to bring full-size Leslie cabinets and a full C3, Hammond C3, um, Oregon, and, you know, flight cases. That stuff's not going to usually fit um, with these larger casinos that have you um, basically playing on a postage stamp. <laughs> so the more stuff that is going direct, the better. Okay? It's just the only way you're going to get heard. They do not like guitar players. They don't like instruments really at all except for keyboards. You know, of course the keyboards are going uh, via direct boxes. So everybody have direct boxes on hand because they may or may not supply one for you. Usually not. Uh, so everybody have direct boxes to deal with your ground problems and to be able to run XLRs from your quarter inch outputs. You definitely want ground lifts on your little um, direct boxes. So again, as much direct stuff as you can do and if your monitors, if you have on stage monitors and if they are too loud, the guy is going to shut them down. You know, if you keep asking for more, he's going to turn it down on you. It just happens every time. So if you will invest in in-ear monitors, it's the only real way to go. Um, if you have to use wedges, again, um, they're not going to give you much. So deal with it appropriately. Um, just think it through. Uh, they like it. If you have to use monitors, to use those little like hotspot monitors that simply uh, plug, you know, screw in on top of a microphone stand and you can kind of hear something through there. But that's about it. So, casinos, 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 be on your best behavior. Um, again, be prepared to add a member to the band. Some will also um, demand that you have a horn in the band, a sax player or a trumpet player. Again, they are available for hire. Contact the um, agency that you are paying, um, and they will hook you up with one. It's just odd, you know. Um, not every place is like that, but some are. So if you're going to go on the road and do this, expect everything that I've already told you. Okay? So, of course, keep the foul language gone. Um, no sexual innuendos. They do like the girls to dress up showing a little bit of something. That is nice. And the more sparkles and uh, if you have a bedazzler, everybody use it. I don't know if you all know who Ralph Nudie was, but uh, made Nudie suits. Yep, the Porter Wagner and uh, jackets and everything with the rhinestones and sequins everywhere. They still love those. Uh, most casinos are finally getting into... Um, LED lighting so you're not so hot. Uh, the Virgin River here has not so they've still got 1,000 watt par cans less than three feet from your face. Right on the front. Just front lighting only. No back lighting to make it look cool at all. It's horrid. Horrid. And then the light controller is mounted on the wall behind a curtain so you can't step on for different scenes and all that. You just turn it on and leave it what they have it on. It's really, it's not glamorous at all. <laughs> so just be prepared for all of these different things. Again, bass players, I know you're used to using direct boxes. Uh, guitar players usually aren't, but um, man, get you a system that will do direct and have it sounding right way before you ever go to a casino because... Um, what you hear through the headphones when you're programming it and what goes out live, blah, 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 is so amazingly different and all your patch, none of your patches will be the right volume for you. So play with it through your own PA with the band and so forth and um, play it like you're going to everybody, like you're going into a casino, like there is, n like there are nothing provided. You can't take amps. Try it that way. Have a setup in mind 
So that's all you take in is your direct stuff. Again, there might be a small PA, and if there is, you have to use it. You can't add to it unless there's just no monitors. Again, they will let you bring in some sort of monitors, but if again, if the back of those monitors are just too loud, and they will be, no matter if they're off or not, people again listen with their eyeballs. If you look like a loud band, like if I walk in with all this, they're going to think you're too loud. But that's the nature of the beast. Um, you can always ponytail it and stick it under a cowboy hat or whatever. But expect all that. Okay? So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, of course, you can ask below. And you guys be groovy. And again, um, click tracks are great. As much stuff that can be sequenced is great. Again, because of the everything going in di direct. So if you have horn parts that are just playing from your laptop, they love that stuff. Um, they don't care if you're doing karaoke tracks and um, doing the Millie Vanilli thing, but actually singing. But if the whole band is just kind of pretending to play to the tracks, they honestly don't care and they don't know the difference. It's actually that way. So you could honestly pretty much do karaoke tracks and pantomime the thing and then again sing live, but they don't notice and they don't care. And also, um, tip jars have become a thing of the past for casinos. Uh, they won't let you put anything out anywhere, and especially the word tips on the front of it. No, uh, you could have some sort of a bucket just randomly sitting there that um, is way off to the side that the eye in the sky, meaning surveillance cameras, which there's going to be plenty on, and they're going to be all over. So if you got somebody who is late all the time, um, put him under control or bring somebody else in because um, they're on it and they're up there in surveillance watching you. They're watching to see if you're drinking on stage. You're usually not allowed to. Okay, so get your habits under control. It's very, it's a dictatorship, very much so. So it, there's nothing glamorous about it other than, you know, you get to play Vegas. Woo. Um, and then there's all the Indian-owned casinos and so forth. And that's where you generally run into the janitors uh, running the soundboard. All right. India casinos, especially in, like, Minnesota and the Dakotas. That's where you'll find a lot of that. Okay? Um, some places are more lenient and you can go in as a band and bring in an amplifier and you know have to you have generally have to put it on the side because it can't face straight out but put it on a stand or anything that tilts up pointed at you or in front of you and pointing up at you but um, never fire anything directly out in the audience because they will just turn you off okay so Hopefully that will generally help, and again, I just wanted to make the video for the next person or people who ask me or anybody that, of course, is looking for this information. Um, that's about it, okay? So expect to be setting up at weird times so that you are not interrupting their slot tournament when they have a hundred machines in the lounge and a bunch of old people just sitting there pounding on those. And they want you to come in at 2 o'clock in the morning and set up. And then, you know, you'll play the next day or whatever, that, later that same day. But just because they have certain things going on or the ball game is on. And get used to that, too. There's always screens that drop down in front of the band. And some kind of sport is going on. And sometimes they want you to go on regardless of the game. And people will be mad at you. Um, other times they will not allow you to start until a particular game is over. It depends on um, if they have an actual sports book, uh, paramutual uh, betting um, outside of the lounge, or if um, everybody's going to be seated in the lounge for whatever games they're betting on, or if they're not betting on the games, they just... People would rather see a game than watch the band, of course. And that's just the way it is. So, 
Once again, Scott Grove, GroovyMusicLessons.com. I hope you can use the information. And until next time, um, yeah, get everything and everybody under control. Get as much stuff direct as humanly possible. And um, check it all out before that. Do some, you know, run-throughs. Um, and you're going to have to reconfigure your, your rig. Um, expect to come out of your mixer, which normally goes into your processing and your equalizers or your mains. Um, come out of the EQs for your two line outs. Okay? If you only have one line out, just get a Y splitter for two XLR so you'll get both sides because they will be ran in stereo and they won't just let you sum it right in the middle. They are weird like that. Um, sometimes they will send a person down just to watch you set up and make sure that the drums are inside the, behind the plexiglass and make sure there are no amps there and make sure but they don't know anything about anything. <laughs> it happens. Um, anyway, you guys be groovy, have great gigs, and um, hope to hear from you. I hope your gigs are awesome and uh, the, at least one tip helps you out. And um, never mention tips on stage. Not allowed. Okay? So again, contact the agent or the other bands. See what is normal um, before you sign a deal and end up really, really surprised. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye.